poor Betty's in the bathtub. That's her alibi. Yes. She's still in the bathtub going, Mommy and Daddy are fighting. Oh, <laughs> crying in the bathtub. Hey, Maniacs. Hey, Maniacs. It's Midsummer Maniacs, the comedy recap podcast where we cover a new episode of the ITV show Midsummer Murders and dig into the murder, the mayhem, the loonies, and everything else we love. I'm Sarah. And I'm Mark. And hey, this is episode 129. 129. I still, the fact that I have folders, so every 50 episodes I I archive the folder. Mm -hmm. So we're now on... Archive three. Wow. Which is weird. Back in the old days, we used to record this podcast on a reel to reel. We had like two pieces of string and some can. We had to mail it to people <laughs> <laughs> through the post office. The post office. Today, we're going to cover season 22, episode three Happy Families. Happy be family. Hey, guess what? Surprise. They're not happy. No. This is an episode from season 22, which means we have a mini spoiler free episode for this podcast. If you have not watched this episode, we're about to ruin it for you. Go listen to the mini. Mini episode 14. Happy Families, Winter's Banana Hammock. Yes. <laughs> then watch the episode, then come back and listen to this so we don't ruin it for you. When when we released that episode, I don't know if you remember this, but we also did a little uh, picture of uh, Mr. Hendricks. Yeah. With his, his PJs barely on. Yeah. And it, it uh, caused quite the sensation. It was popular. It was popular. Maybe not as popular as the picture that we posted to the subreddit this week that had to be tagged, not safe for work. Yes. So, which was the ass comparison. <laughs> someone on uh, the Reddit thread, and they deserve all the credit. On the subreddit, yes. Um, suggested that, that we compare the ass of um, three middle-aged men. There's Colin. Colin. Rodney. And Pat. Yes. And so. Colin is the ass running in the woods. Rodney is the ass in the mortuary. And Pat is the ass in the hot tub. It's really <laughs> mushroom mortuary hot tub. Glamping. Yes. <laughs> so I got the idea. Maybe you need to see them side by side to be able to, to choose. So you made a graphic and I posted it. You did. <laughs> so people can see and make their choice in an informed way. Yes. Having looked at the asses, which made me wonder, did Mark Williams have makeup on his butt? I don't think so. I think he did. I don't know. The skin is so smooth. We're going to talk enough about winners and, <laughs> and stuff. Anyhow. Yeah. Tell us about, uh, what, uh, well. So in that Wait episode. a minute. Before yeah. we dive into anything about the episode. Yes. It's your birthday. It's my birthday. Happy birthday. Now, Monday the 27th is not my birthday. No. But we record on Saturday. Yes. Two days before we release the episode. Yes. You have two whole days to edit it. Two whole days. It's your including birthday. Including my birthday. <laughs> so, so what did you get for your birthday? I got an entire box of Star Trek figures, which is fantastic from my amazing fantastic wife still in the packages yes yeah absolutely old school figures yeah that i had to fight in an online auction to get and you you, <laughs> you, you thought i wasn't into them i'm like no no i'm savoring them <laughs> well you left them in the box no, i thought no, no, no. he's not even looking at them no. i didn't know you were taking them out one at a time no, no no i will take them out one at a time and read the entire packaging <laughs> Because I'm that kind of nerd. And I made you pancakes this morning. Yes. Canadian mean. bacon and real Canadian maple syrup. Mm. It was delicious. Happy birthday, baby. Yes. Thank you very much. Handsome man. I it's turned 5,400,332 trillion to one. Well, you still look yep. 3 million years old. Yes. Maybe. All right. Tell so us about So to watch it like a maniac. Yes. Watch like a maniac. We suggested that you looked for some stuffed animals with musical instruments. Now they're hard to miss. They're hard to miss. There was a long discussion about winter's underwear. In a completely underrelated note, we also had Joshua on that episode. Yeah. <laughs> and finally, we talked about Jonathan Creek and overlapping characters mm -hmm. because this is kind of a Jonathan Creek 
reunion. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's three actors in this episode who are also regulars on Jonathan Creek. If you didn't listen to the mini or don't know who Jonathan Creek is, it's an Alan Davies detective show that ran four, five seasons mm-hmm. and uh, has... Carolyn mm-hmm. Quinton plays yeah. his sidekick in the first, first three first two, two yeah or three. two or three seasons and it is a whodunit show that is a mystery every single time usually like it's, locked a, it's a puzzle yeah every single time yeah we'll get to the difference between puzzle game and toy so when did happy families originally air it last origi- week or <laughs> no <laughs> the it broadcast in the uk the 3rd of october 2021 and filmed January, February 2021. So it was filmed during pandemic. Yep. And 4.5 million views. Directed by Audrey Cook and Nick Hicks Beach wrote it. I like the setup of this episode i like the idea that they're on an island that you can only get to by a little chain ferry and that he does you know he's a game designer and the house is full of game related things i like that yes but the plot itself makes me really sad yeah it's it is playing and enjoying a trope yeah it's it's not even it's not even subverting that trope it's it is having fun with it. A lot of people have compared this episode to Agatha Christie's And Then There Were None or um, the movie Sleuth with Laurence Olivier and Michael Caine. Yes. Because he was a puzzle designer who invites his wife's lover to an island. And then, oh, yeah. I definitely have seen that You movie. know, kind of tricks yeah, him. Yeah, yeah. That movie was remade later with um, Michael Caine playing Olivier's part. Yes. With a, and- a younger guy as the... Wasn't it Christopher Reeves? No, that's Mousetrap. Okay, yes. Or, no, the movie is called Death Trap. Death Trap. The play is Mousetrap. The play is Mousetrap. Yeah, but it's kind of like that. So we've got this. All those are kind of the same. They're very similar. Yeah. So we've got this house um, on the island owned by the Karras family, Victor and Eleanor. He also owns a game company where he makes high-end board games. And so there's lots of references to his games. So Um, this is high-end what in the board game community would be called Euros. They are abstract games like chess, right? mm. Uh, The best way to explain it is in a Euro game, you move things and concepts around rather than actual in a non-euro your as your spaceship is a spaceship okay <laughs> well but in checkers you're you're a disc and it doesn't stand for anything yeah it's so abstract. then where's chess fall it's abstract because it's a, a battle between two armies but it's still abstract like stratego is abstract. okay okay like the characters uh, in chess the pieces on the board have become abstracted from actual figures. Okay. Right. Yeah. Now you can play chess with figures that look like those parts, Mm -hmm. but the traditional chess set. I don't want to join any army where my title is pawn. Yeah. (laughs) Might as well be called cannon fodder. Fodder. (laughs) But checkers is the the greatest abstraction. Yeah. Because it is a, it's, me versus you moving on a board that has no features with items that have no features. So Karis has filled his house to the rafters, especially his foyer. There's too many things in that entry hall. I Way too going, many things. Who is going to dust this house? <laughs> you can barely get up the stairs. I know. There's little Egyptian figurines on every single stair, plus gigantic statues. Then there's like Greco-Roman busts everywhere then there are these stuffed animals with musical instruments then there's all the oddities and curiosities like the smoking monkey and the creepy sailor and that thing in the big flat bamboo hat that we can't even figure out what it's supposed to be we'll post a picture of it it's either a dragon a monkey or a dog wearing like a kimono and a big flat hat it's just it's a feast for the eyes now (laughs) <laughs> I've never been pregnant. Mm-hmm. Okay, I've I've managed to avoid pregnancy all my life. Good job. Um, do you think Eleanor, the character that sorry Rachel, the actress, is pregnant here? I don't. Okay, good because coming down those stairs would like health and safety would be like no, no, no. I I don't think somebody that pregnant would even agree to film because you know you know how pregnant you're going to be in advance. So you agree to film something, you know how far along you're going to be. 
You mean it like it progresses linearly? Thank goodness that pre- that pregnancy doesn't last a random amount of time. Can you imagine how awful that would be? Oh my gosh. If they said, well, the baby might come anywhere from like eight months to like 18 months. Or. That would be horrible. Much worse. <laughs> much worse. Your gestation time was shortened to say 24 hours and was also random. <laughs> Ah, uh, wow. Being pregnant with triplets, it didn't feel like 24 It would hours. be like, I'll be back. I have to go give birth. Yeah. But you're not, you don't even look pregnant. I will later. Don't worry. Yeah. <laughs> By dinner time, I'll be busting out the Sci-fi scenes. Sci-fi movie <laughs> craziness. No, I'd say she's not. And the reason why I said she's not initially is because I think the baby's way too high. It's definitely a pregnancy belly. But she does a good job of like always having her hands on it. I would say that she has been pregnant, but she's not pregnant here. Yeah. And I would say mostly because her, like her, she doesn't have the secondary features of roundness in her face Mm -hmm. and things like that. that, Yeah. That, that you would. Though I've known women that if you saw them from, you know, like the bust up, you'd never know they were pregnant. (laughs) Well, and. And then they turn around and you're like, whoa, you swallowed a basketball. Okay. Rachel Sterling is, you know, a woman, a good looking woman. Yeah. She's Diana Riggs daughter, Rachel Sterling, who plays Eleanor. She is the daughter of Diana Riggs. Okay. And Archibald Hugh Sterling. (laughs) I bet you he was fancy. And the, the reason I mention that is that Diana Rigg and Neil Dudgeon were in a show called The Mrs. Bradley Murders together where he played her chauffeur. And it yes, was really and good. She, played, she played the daughter. There, that's a real, that's how old would she have been then? A little girl. Yeah. Yeah. I love IDB. IMDB I biographies. <laughs> she has a degree in history of art from Edinburgh University and formerly lived with her DJ boyfriend in London. <laughs> You can tell who has an agent that have people in their office who are assigned to maintain their client IMDb pages and people who don't. (laughs) Because the people who don't, they're really random. This episode is called Happy Families. Have you ever played Happy Families? No. It's a card game. I've never played Happy Families. So Happy Families, have you played Go Fish? I have indeed played Go Fish. Okay, so, or Old Maid? Uh, Not Old Maid. Old Maid is an American thing as far as I can understand because I... I heard about it as a kid, but never saw the game being played. Okay. So they're all real similar. Where Bugs Bunny makes reference to Old Maid. You're drawing cards to create sets that you then lay down to win points. And if you draw a card that you can't use, you discard it. And the other person can pick it up and add it to one of their sets. And the person with the most sets, i.e. points, when you finish the game wins, right? It's, it's really to teach pattern recognition and gin rummy. Well, so there are different families. So there's a mom, dad, daughter, and son of each family, and you want to okay. collect all four of them. Okay. Right? And they're all based on occupations. Yes. And I knew about Happy Families, and I knew how it worked, but I had never seen the original version of the card deck until I was doing research for this episode. And I didn't know how old it was either. So it was developed in 1851, Right before the Great Exhibition in London. Okay. Right? By this guy named Jean-Jacques Jr. (laughs) I know it's a name. But he must... What should we name him? Jean. Okay. Well, that's your name. Mr. Jacques. Mm. Oh, now he's Jr. Now he's Jr. Jean-Jacques Jr. Jr. (laughs) Now that we've offended every Every French French person person ever. ever. He must have been a really cool dude, though, because he also invented Tiddlywinks. Oh. Ludo. And snakes and ladders. Wow. Yeah. That's pretty good. He's a cool dude. I can't imagine him bending tiddly winks. Like, okay, bounce this ball. Grab those. Bounce this ball. Grab those. That's not tiddly winks. No, that's Jack's. That's Jack's. How's tiddly winks work? Tiddly winks is where you take the little round disc and you push it on the other little round disc and it flips it up. And oh. You try to get to it's the It's like sun. caps. Yeah. Ah. But still. So he, Ludo... Like, so a ludologist is someone who studies games. Right, Ludo's play. Is Ludo, Ludo is play. Mm-hmm. And did he know that then? Is it, is it I'm like sure, Latin for Greek. play? Greek. Or it's Greek. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So he invented this game, right? And then, of course, a lot of other people made their own versions of it. And this is how you and I were talking earlier today about whether it's a popular game. Like, would Winter know about Happy Families? And yeah. oh, yes, he would know about Happy Families. Okay. Um, there's all kinds of different versions of it. Well, we also talked about nominal determinism <laughs> when we talked about it. Because yeah. all there are, all the names of the families are puns, like 
the Mr. Bun, Bun is the baker. Mr. Bun yes. is the baker. Right. There were, uh, in the 60s, there was this whole run of, like, happy families of the world. So you had, like, Mr. and Mrs. Germany and their children. Oh, okay. And Mr. and Mrs. Zulu and their children. Wow. And Mr. and Mrs. Korea and their children. And they end up being a bit racist, basically. A bit racist? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I kind of understand the idea of, like, teaching people about teaching kids about cultures around the world, but uh, it's a fine line you got to walk. But then there are all these crazy promotional versions. Okay. So I highly recommend going to a website called World of Playing Cards. Okay. It's wopc.co.uk. Okay. And searching for happy families because they have all these brand-driven promotional decks oh, of happy cool. families, like one that was put out by Imperial Tobacco. Okay. Where each... Family is a different kind of tobacco in a tin. Oh. And their bodies are made out of the tins. Oh. And a lot of them are smoking, <laughs> even some of the kids. Okay. It's real weird. Yep. Um, then there was the British gas version called the Happy Gas Families. <laughs> it's, Excuse me? It's just weird. Yeah. Um, then there was one done by the Dartmouth Swimming Pool Renovation Society. Okay. That's the one I sent you. Oh. Uh, the creepy, I'm scarred by that deck. Yeah, that family specifically. Uh, it's super weird. Um, but my favorite is one Everybody's that- Everybody's like, what? Yeah. What is happening? You're going to have to go look at that. Just going to have to go look. And then there, my favorite one, though, was done by a, a placement and temp agency mm -hmm. in like 83. And one of the, instead of being families, they're like groups of employees who do similar jobs. Okay. So there's like the admins, you know, there's mm -hmm. like four different kinds of admins, but there's a computer programmer. Computer programmer? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it has a little description of the job on the cards. It's very interesting. That's super cool. <laughs> Anyhow, uh, it's his birthday, right? It's Victor's birthday. So they've, uh, we've invited you all to the island to okay. celebrate Victor's birthday. I'm confused. That's my Rachel Sterling impression, by the yes. way. Rachel. She has a very throaty voice she does she does i have a question mm. well i have a couple first of all why is this party being held when the two people who are hosting the party do not want to go to it because they own a company i guess and they feel like they have to but then they don't they don't invite like business associates no. like you know you would expect them to invite people they do business with no victor they only like, invite people they kind of don't like he's like i don't want to even be here like, you held a party, dude. I think we're You're supposed to think that Eleanor sort of planned it and threw it for him. But then she doesn't want to be. <laughs> she doesn't really want to go. And then, And he's you know, supposed to announce this thing with the private eye yeah. on the next day. I'm yeah. assuming this is Friday night party, Saturday night. So they would have everybody stay Revelation. over. And, yeah. But, again, why do you have a party? <laughs> It's and the only thing that happens is that of this party, and I realized that this could describe every party, is everyone stands around in one room and, with drinks, like, and then somebody dies and everybody leaves. Yeah, except the people who hate each other who have to stay. <laughs> That's every party we've ever been to, honey. I keep I keep on going. Why are they even having this party? <laughs> <laughs> so, but they have the party and. Right off the bat, Helen and Andrew. So, okay, so there's the Carises, Then there's the Mathesons. That's Paul and Alicia. And Alicia is Eleanor's sister, yes. right? Then there's the Wells. Andrew, Helen, and Hugo. And Hugo and Helen are the parents of Andrew. Andrew is a waiter at the party. and Who, who also happens to be the gay lover of Joshua. Yes, who is... Victor's PA yes. assistant and Hugo and Helen and Andrew run a business where they host murder mystery parties. And she happens to have sold a game to tried to sell a game, him a game. We'll talk about that. Like a bunch of years ago. Yeah. So like in the middle, everyone is related again. Yes. But what I, I really like this idea of them hosting a murder mystery at this party because it's a midsummer, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, Helen and Andrew pretend to get in a fight. She throws champagne and he's like, I've got proof. I even have the pictures. And he storms out and, and she chases him. And everyone acts like that's real there. Yes. Okay. 
Then they open the door and Helen's standing over Andrew's body. He's bled out and it's midsummer. So we're like, wow, first murder. Check. But they laugh there. The yeah. people laugh. Yeah. So they know somehow they've been the translation <laughs> between yeah. the throwing of the champagne and the killing of the son, who's not actually dead. Right. They know it's a joke. Well, and what the payoff of that whole joke is is when is Victor's what, actually killed, everybody applauds. Everybody, it. everybody applauds. applauds. Which I love that. Yeah. I it's love all it. All very good. So they've probably been invited knowing there's gonna be a murder mystery, but they don't know who's involved. So when those two have an argument, they don't know if that's part of it. So, but once actually, he's dead, they know that yeah. it is. Have you been to actually a murder mystery party? Yes. How how did it go? It was strange. Okay. Because we were so we were given a character like a little brief mm-hmm. on who we were. Yes, same with me. And it was a weird imbalance of people who were really into it and people who weren't. Oh. So some people came all decked out as their character and really wanted to tell you, oh, I'm Mrs. Mustard and I'm this and I'm that and everybody mm-hmm. and other people are like. My card said I was Captain Blah Blah. I don't know. You know, and it, it was it was strange. Did you, you've been to one too? So I went to one. It was on New Year's Eve, and everyone at the party knew each other intimately. Mm-hmm. They'd all gone to high school together. Okay, except for me. Were you the killer? No. Oh, but I figured it out in five minutes. Were you the victim? <laughs> and I remember talking to the person who I was with. Going, I know the answer. Mm. When do you want me to tell the answer? <laughs> give other people a chance, Mark. Well, no, that's what I wanted to give other people yeah. a chance. The one I was at, um, I think I think my mom's friend was actually the one who was throwing the party. And she was invited and they needed another person. And there was a young character. And so she asked me if I wanted to go. And I said, yeah, I'll go. So I was in like high school. Yeah. So it was like all grownups and me. Oh. And I had to like play a maid or a nursemaid or a waitress or something like that. I don't remember. I was also the oldest person at this party. Yeah. By four years. Okay, so you were the creep at the party. Kind (laughs) of. Not four years. It would have been uh, three years. I have a feeling that when I was at, a lot of things went over my head because I was young enough, maybe not to get a lot of the references, maybe, so I didn't know. Let's talk about this entry hall where the party is. There's all these big Egyptian statues, right? Giant Egyptian statues. Like more than a story tall, some of them. Like, okay. If I'm rich, okay, Mm. I live in this giant house on an island, Mm -hmm. okay, I understand that as a really rich homeowner mansion guy, Mm -hmm. I need to have theme rooms. Yeah. For instance, I would have a room that looked like an 80s arcade. Okay. Like straight top to bottom 80s arcade. Pinball. Pinball. Video games. Video games. Darkness. The same lights. A little snack bar. The whole bit. Mm -hmm. Right? Everything is in this room. Yeah. It is the Egyptian room, the automaton room, the The, stuffed animal with the music instruments room. Yeah. It's also the billiards room. No, no. That's another. There's two of those, and this isn't one of them. Okay, okay. I've got a note about that (laughs) because I'm weirded out by it. I don't understand it. Yeah. And these are references to games, right? So yeah. he's he's made the Hounds and Jekylls game, which is yeah. based on an ancient Egyptian game. So that's why we got the ancient Egyptian stuff. He's made whatever animal game Barnaby was trying to play with Betty when he had his tantrum with about the, the turtle. With the turtle, which is that it's a nice callback here that it's a turtle. Yeah. Yeah. To him Because he gets to dress up as a turtle. Yeah. Yeah. But I I don't know if that's the game where the animals play the instruments because the turtle doesn't have like a drums kit or something. It's just a regular turtle. (laughs) Not a hero in a half shell or anything. No. Did you, so you saw the giraffe playing the the bass cello. Yes. Did you see the zebra playing what? It's a banjo? No. Is it a drum? No. Okay. I don't know. It's a brass instrument that I thought was a tuba. Oh, that's right. It's not a tuba. It's a zebra playing a sousaphone. It's a sousaphone because he puts it over top of him. Yes. And it has the (laughs) big open It's a real zebra playing a real sousaphone. Yeah, it's like they're actual taxidermied animals. At least that's what they're meant to look like. They're meant to look realistic. And the reason I know what a sousaphone looks like is because my brother played one in the Marching Saints uh, 
a local marching band in Carlton Place. The reason I know what one looks like is I Googled list of brass instruments with pictures and looked <laughs> until I found the right one. I was like, it's not a tuba and it's not a French horn. It's somewhere in between. Yeah. What is that? It's a sousaphone. It's a sousaphone. I'm kind of, I'm interested in what the Wells do for a living because Helen clearly writes the stories. Yep. And then Hugo is an actor, I guess. And he plays the detective. Poor, poor Hugo. Everything about Hugo, I just want to be like, oh, Hugo, <laughs> you solved it. And you're so happy that you solved but it. But now you're dead because you're not very smart. And he, he didn't solve it for oh, I can get money and get these people, yeah. or I'm so brilliant, I can solve it. No, no, he's doing it to help his wife. Mm -hmm. And he is the saddest death, because even though Victor's death is not needed, yeah, his death is, is really, not, really needed. not needed. She destroys two families. For no reason. Because of a threes company plot. Yeah, Let's we'll get, get there. We'll get, we'll get there. there. Hold off on yeah. that. But I agree with you. Hugo is, and again, this is Midsummer playing, I almost said playing with itself. Um, <laughs> this is Midsummer no, making. No, we'll get to winters later. <laughs> this is Midsummer making jokes about itself because, of course, he steps forward and he says, I'm Doppler of the yard and yep. I'm going to solve this and I'm going to have to interview each of you one at a time. And, you know, like, yep. which is almost exactly what Barnaby has to do. Like, yep. Okay, back up. I'm the police. Yep. I'll talk to each of you. But we also know he doesn't know what he's doing either. No. Because he's not actually a detective. But he, he just plays it one out. Of, he, yeah, but mo mostly because of sheer chance, yes. not, not in a reliable, yeah, deductive yeah. way. More than not. He oh, can, and he's he can, wrong. Yeah, well, there is that. <laughs> he, he is wrong. He, he figures out what one clue is. Yes. Like, what is that object? Not what yeah. it means. Yeah. But mostly he can solve mysteries because his wife writes them and tells them the solution because that's his job yes. is to pretend to solve them. <laughs> And he acts like he's solving them. I'm like, dude, you're not solving It's real them. easy to find the solution yeah. if you know who the culprit is already. Yes. Boy, I, they lean heavy on the, it was a dark and stormy night. Oh, yeah, here. yeah, yeah. I just think it's interesting that as a, as a family, they go around pretending to kill each other every weekend. Yes. Presumably, they take turns being victims or something. It's either Helen dies or Andrew dies it or, must be what it's like when your mom and dad are are magicians. Yeah. And they are like They she, go on the road and you go with them. He the magician or the lady magician is constantly making the other person cut in half disappear, or disappear, stabbed in a box. <laughs> anyway, I have an important PSA. Okay, what's your important PSA? Did you ever have those the more you know PSAs on Saturday morning TV? Uh, yeah, I did because by that time I was ac accessing cable. So I had the little star that went across yep. and that the more you know, yes. and it had like one of the Corys or Matthew yep. Perry or something Somebody. on it. <laughs> yeah. So imagine that the more you know. Yes. If you have statues in your home that are holding weapons, make sure that both the statue and the weapon are secure. No, the no. more you know. No, no. They're just <laughs> barely sitting there. And they also have like spring loaded ejection systems. Yes. Because that Anubis tips a little. You think, oh, it's going to fall on him because he's on the floor. No, no. Swing. It launches its own spear, which apparently is detachable. Why would that even be detachable? Why wouldn't it just be part of the statue? No. And the spear must fly up into the air and then tumble over so that it's blade down and then impale poor victor on Just the floor happened to kill poor victor and it's sharp which it shouldn't be he, what what should have happened they should have had a figure that had the the spear up in a thrusting motion yeah and then when it fell and when it fell it fell on on him, him. yeah that would have made sense but it didn't matter because that's not what killed him anyway no. he was poisoned with cyanide he got vaped to death yeah 12 hours earlier <laughs> okay so now we get to go to the barnabys and talk about my favorite thing in this episode that i can't figure out are you ready oh i have one but it's not this but yeah okay so john's having his little tantrum about okay. the turtle <laughs> turtle tantrum <laughs> 
He goes and he yells up the stairs. Why Sarah. doesn't she just put it away? I'm going to throw it everywhere. Where is the turn off? Why is he five? I don't know. I got a promotion, so I'm going to be angry. <laughs> Poor Betty's in the bathtub. That's her alibi. Yes. She's still in the bathtub going, mommy and daddy are fighting. <laughs> oh, crying in the bathtub. While well, he's like, Betty likes the turtle best. Ah! But next to him. On the wall at the stair is the the weirdest thing we've ever seen in the Barnaby house. Weirder than I'm naked, spread legged, open. That's at least kind of art. Arty or Spider Man covers. I can't believe that we still have the Spider Man covers. This is a tile. Is the best way I can yeah. describe it. It's it's an ivory color. We have a photo of it. We will share it in our notes. Yep. On the wall, next to the base of the stairs, with nothing else. I, I can't describe it as anything else, but two naked people fondling each other on it. <laughs> That's all I can say about it. I'm going to go extra and say they look young. Like naked children fondling, fondling each other? I didn't use that word. It's, it could be I like an Adam and... I demonetized on YouTube. <laughs> it could be an Adam and Eve thing, could but be. it's not clear. But the one naked butt is real clear. They're definitely nude. Yeah. <laughs> and it's right at eye height. So every time you went up your stairs, you'd be like, dudes, thanks. Hey, how you doing? Yep. Naked. Still naked. It's right there. Still don't have any shorts. Okay, bye. Yep. <laughs> be like drawing the shorts on or something the only good thing about it is it's above betty's eye height i guess i guess so she's not face into the nude Here's butts the on the wall weirdest thing i don't know what it's doing there walls oh it's my note just says little nude people on the barnaby staircase <laughs> i love the fairy so we talked about chain fairies in the yes in the uh mini so i didn't think we should cover them here but it it's so great with Anat Badlands on the front of that boat. Oh, and yeah. How the boat is so atmospheric and then it just goes away. <laughs> She's like a um, like a Valkyrie on the front in yeah. her red slicker. Yeah. Dog man. It's actually Anubis. Uh, Duh. Uh, she's so dramatic. Winter is smart. He is good at his job. Yes. Why in the world does he taste the poison? I do not know. He finds a bottle marked poison in a cabinet. He opens it. He sniffs it. He dips his finger in it. And he tastes it. There are plenty of poisons where that alone would kill you. Yeah. Why does he do that? Absolutely. That's dumber than somebody going, is that cocaine? (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Which they would never do either. Never, ever do. He tastes it. I I don't get it. And they say that the jar of prussic acid that's sitting there, which poison, is left over from the house being fumigated. Yeah. Okay. When you have your house fumigated, well, first of all, that house is too big to be fumigated. Have you ever seen a house being fumigated? Yeah, they put the the circus tent tent over it. It's awesome. (laughs) They like seal the house up with a big tent. Yeah. It's it's almost always straight. I don't know if they do that anymore, but. They got to do something to seal it so the fumes stay in. And then it's like big machines. It's not like, oh, well, we just bring these little glass bottles of prussic acid and just sit them around the house and we keep one spare and you can you can just keep it. Okay. There is a fantastic X-Files episode about this. Um, yeah, it's a big stripy tent. Yeah. Isn't it? Yep. I love that Hugo thinks he's a detective. He's like, "Oh, we can solve this, Barnaby." And oh. Barnaby is not nice. So, why don't you just keep those theories to yourself? Close the door in your face. Yeah. Hugo is played by Adrian Edmondson, mm-hmm. who is amazing. He's a good actor. Once you know the breadth of the roles he's played, you're also a good actor. So if you haven't listened to the mini, we talk about this too, but we'll just kind of recap it quickly. He played uh, a sort of producer, 90s, 80s guy in... He's like a TV executive in in Jonathan Jonathan Creek. Creek. Yeah. Yeah. So he's got a ponytail Mm -hmm. and he talks on a cellular phone (laughs) and he goes to America all the time. Yeah. But... He's also in Young Ones. Vivian in the He's Young Ones. Vivian in the Young Ones. Now, if you haven't seen the Young Ones, stop. Go watch the Young Ones. Just watch we've, a clip. We've told you already. And you'll see him and go, what? That's he the same actor. three stars embedded in his, his forehead. forehead. Yes. Like head piercings. And a punk rock hairdo. And it makes kind of a duck face all the time. Like, like a yeah. Billy Idol he kind is of. absolutely the personification of the word oi. Oi. Yeah. <laughs> and the, these two roles, these three roles could not be 
it's it's far different. They're very different. It's <laughs> absolutely so different. He's such a good actor. And again, knowing what you know about this episode, you feel the most sorry for his death. Mm-hmm. So there's like the older people and then there's the younger people. And the younger people are Danny, who's Victor's daughter, Joshua, his admin, and Andrew, the son of the murder mystery people. Yes. Right? And Danny is like, oh, all the time. Like, oh, well, and in the get middle, me out of here as if. In, uh. in the middle age, you have, okay, so you have Victor and his wife. They're, they're kind of older. Mm-hmm. And his sister, her sister. Alicia and her, her husband. Her husband is the guy who is the least observant human being yeah. ever. He's an accountant who got fired by Victor, right? Yeah. And Danny's just like having a fit all the time. Because she thinks she's supposed to inherit the business or whatever. Yeah. And Joshua and Andrew are constantly having like private secret conversations because they're a couple. But everybody seems to know that. But that's but that's not what they're talking about. They're talking about the fact that they've been embezzling from Victor, yeah. stealing from Victor for a while. Like I did like when they're confronted with that. They were like, yeah, we did that. Yeah. Because he's awful. And why would we kill him? Because that means we have to stop doing it. Yeah. And we're going to keep doing it. In fact, I'm doing it right now. Danny says that she was at the party, of course. Yeah. And though she didn't want to go because of the three line whip. Yes. Like it was a um it was a responsibility for her to be there. It was an expectation. Do you know what a three line no, whip I don't. is a reference to? I don't. So you know what a whip is though in politics? Yes. So the party a whip, whip is the person who gets you out to vote. Yes. So a three line whip is a strict instruction to attend a vote. Uh-huh. So the party Party leader says, you have to be there. And if you don't show up to vote, there will be a serious consequence, like a fine or a penalty or something like this is a pivotal vote. So it was like the highest level of expectation that you can have for somebody to be somewhere. That's three line whip. Okay. Now, we also have another fourth younger person who is Danny's boyfriend. Yes. Noah. No. Whose only job is to make a plate and break up with her. That's his whole job. Introduce a Japanese thing that the writer clearly thought was cool. Kintsugi. Yep. Now. We've talked about Kintsugi before, haven't we? I don't know. In and of itself, Kintsugi is a beautiful concept. episodes, what we've not talked about. It's a beautiful concept. You mend something, but you don't try to hide that it was broken. You you make an asset of it, right? Yeah. And so most of the Kintsugi that you see is... It's Asian pottery, and it's mended with this gold glue. Yes. So it's a glue, a paste glue that has gold powder in it. So Noah has made one of these. Yep. Apparently that day, yeah, he made it. He whipped it together. Whipped it together from something that got broken in the house Man, and something some he found in the trash. setting glue. Yeah. Maybe he should have glued the spear on the Anubis with that stuff. You're all supposed to kind of take your time. So the fact that he whipped it together in the bedroom with yeah. a, like a little plastic spatula, not quite it. Well, and it's like, I understand that you're not supposed to, you're supposed to show where the crack was. But he makes Frankenplate. Yeah, you're supposed to mend the object itself, not b- bundle a bunch of things that don't go together together. And by Frankenplate, I don't mean Dr. Frankenstein. I mean Dr. Frankenstein's uh, plate mon- monster. <laughs> plate monster. It's a platter monster, it's to pl- be specific. Yes. Um, <laughs> so I, I went looking for platter <laughs> monsters. Frankenstein. Water monster. <laughs> and I found the exact yeah. Kintsugi platter. Yeah. With the exception of the one piece of blue glass. Which we never see on that plate. No, we, we kind of do. We do. He When he gives it to Victor, Victor sort of holds it up and looks at it and says, you got this out of the trash mm-hmm. or whatever. Um, this morning, thanks for the present that you made today. That's like your kid running out of the room and coloring a birthday card for you and coming back because they clearly forgot not that that's happened to you today, birthday boy. No. Nope. Um, but I found this exact plate on yeah, a website it's, it's where they're the exact selling it. Plates. Which then made me feel a little bit crazy because this same website sells like Kintsugi dish sets. Okay. That all are Franken plates, by the way. But you're supposed to mend something that you broke. I know. So if they sell identical <laughs> dishes... Like, you could buy a set, I could buy a set, a listener could buy a set, and they would all be the same. That goes against the very nature of what it is. What are they doing? Are they buying dishes and breaking them and then putting them back together again over and over again? That's like a baseball hockey puck. It's wrong. It's wrong. Like, that's like breaking somebody's arm just so you could give them a cool cast. 
No, it's like breaking 30 people's <laughs> arms so that everybody had the same cast. And then selling it. <laughs> it totally undermines the whole concept of Kintsugi. <laughs> like, ah, I nobody buy that, okay? It is, it is mass, presu- mass produced Kintsugi, yeah. which is an oxymoron yeah. at the highest level. Exactly. That's what made my head hurt. Because I saw it and I was like, wait a minute. What does that mean? That's n- no. no. No, no. Frankenplates.com, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> no, Frankenstein's monsterplate.com. <laughs> oh, 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 Paul has B12 shots because he's anemic. How anemic is this? Dude? He's the anemic accountant. Little known Mark facts. Okay. <laughs> I was a vegetarian for 11 years. Yeah. And so when I was a vegetarian, I took B vitamins because... You don't get as much of it when you're not eating meat. I wasn't a vegan, but I I didn't eat meat. And like I took a pill once a day. You took a vitamin. Yeah. A supplement. Yeah. That's not what we're talking about. No. We're talking about somebody whose body does not uh, uptake B12. Yeah. No matter what they eat. So would he need injections every day? No. Oh. He would need an injection every three months. Oh. At 745? Yeah. So it's part of an alibi. Okay. (laughs) But when... Alicia later poisons herself. B12 is an antidote for cyanide. Okay. That's true. What is the symptoms of mild cyanide poisoning? Stomach upset, headache, diarrhea, throwing up, trembling. Yep. Then you have a convulsions and coma if okay. it's more no, than no. that. Mild. But that's like but that's like the next level. So mild is almost like food poisoning. If you Why did she ever poison herself? Because she could have just faked it. Could have just faked it. Yeah. And if she got the B12 shot, which we never see, no. by the way, it would have done nothing. It wouldn't have hurt her. It, no. No. Like to get an she overdose put almond extract of B12. In her cup. She could have put almond yeah. extract in her cup to make it smell like cyanide. Because everybody says it smells like almonds. Yeah. And then, yeah, she would have, if she, you can't OD on it. Yeah. Well, so. you can OD on everything. Yeah. But she may have had to ingest three metric tons of B12 or something. Yeah, it wouldn't have killed her. Yeah. But no, she actually does take some some cyanide because she's committed to the role. Which is dumb, but the whole thing is dumb. She is psychotic. And stupid. Stupid and psychotic. And emotionally broken. Without a reason to be. No, with no reason to be. Other than you always got your way. Okay, okay. First of all, as a youngest sibling, you don't play that card. No. You don't play that because everybody knows all right. You don't have to play that card. <laughs> when you go to youngest sibling school and there is a school. They tell you day one, you're the best. You're Well, no, we're here to tell you that you are actually the best. Yeah, you're the best. It is. Yeah, it's, it's just a fact. A, it's a fact of life. The youngest sibling is the best. We've joked about all the craziness on this set, but one thing they did really well are the portraits of Eleanor and Victor that are in the study. I, I guess you want to call it. They're they beautiful. Took, those actors took those home. Yeah, because they're, they're portraits of. They're them. really good. They're in the background. We got I'm shots sure of they're both printed them. and they're not actual paintings. I I don't care. But they're it still really good. looks like them. I'm not impressed with the puzzle box. It's way too easy to solve. It's it's gigantic for a tiny thing. Yeah. I don't care that the compartment is so small that actually holds the hidden thing. If you're going to make a lacquered box that's a puzzle box that is two and a half feet by two and a half feet, I want to spend 400 days trying to figure yes. that thing out. Yeah. It, it better have like multiple mechanisms yeah. going on. And it, that it handle is, that turns the thing would have got lost a million years ago. Oh my ago. God. And it would have been too easy to figure out. Yeah. There's a hole there. Put something in it. Turn it. Yeah. It's beautiful. It is. It's clearly made by somebody who put a lot of time into making that prop. Yeah. But yeah, if it's going to be that big, it better be that intricate. Victor's computer. Yes. Ha- hmm. He doesn't have a password. He has a daily anagram. Yes, because he's hacked his own operating system. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that apparently connects to a database to pull a daily anagram from and present it. If he's hacked his own operating system, he knows how to create that database. Wouldn't there be days when you couldn't solve it? <laughs> like, well, can't work today. Can't figure out the answer to my own puzzle. I have a number of online social media accounts because of all the various things that I do. Mm-hmm. I barely can keep track of all the passwords that I have. Mm-hmm. Right. 
And most of them are very close together, right? Yeah. I have a series that I hit. Yeah. Right? I would forget that password, those those clues. I'd forget them all the time. Plus, there are those weird uh, crossword anagram things. No, I think the idea is that he doesn't remember it. He has to solve it every day. I don't think I understand this one, though. Yeah. So it says thaw him, et cetera. Yes. Right? Those are the letters that are going to be scrambled. Yes. And I understand the 442. That's four letters, four letters, and two letters. Yes. But I don't get all bothered discuss. How does chat with me equal all bothered discuss? I, discuss works. That's the chat. But I don't. I don't get the all bothered. Maybe somebody who does cryptic crosswords who Maybe listens can will know. Explain it to us because I don't get that part. But I did find other things that would be solutions to the throw him, thaw him, etc. Yes. Other than chat with me. Yes. The answer could have also have been uh, ham itch wet. That's not four four two. Oh, that's true. Well, if the 442 was gone, yeah. it could be ham itch wet or act the whim. Act the whim. But my favorite is chew ham tit. <laughs> <laughs> I realize that's 433, but chew ham tit's much funnier than chat with me. If I put that in the title of the episode, we're going to get a lot of views. <laughs> <laughs> chew ham so tit. It'll be the name of the episode. <laughs> And uh, Helen mentions, she mentions one of their other stories, He Who Slays the Piper, which is a murder that she wrote for a plumber's convention. Yes. <laughs> That's super, she delivers that line without a smirk, without totally flat, and it's so funny. Well, it's Carolyn of, Quentin. She's, she's awesome. Uh, Carolyn Quentin is Fantastic. She's a great actress. and Jonathan Creek, Blue Murder. Oh, all, all kinds of all stuff. All kinds of stuff. Well, and she also does Restoration Home. Well, Carolyn Quinton um, was in, friend of the podcast, uh, Billy the Kid and the Green Bay's Vampire. Yeah, she... Did you know that? Yeah, everybody's in that crap movie. She's also got... Well, she was in this um, fiction podcast called Wooden Overcoats. Yeah. Which, if you like funny fictional podcasts, you should go check out yep. because it's about a family of undertakers. Oh. That's what a wooden overcoat is. Yeah. It's a casket. Yeah. Who are in a, this tiny village. It's very midsummer. Oh, that's and, and then another undertaker comes into town. Uh oh. <laughs> It's very good. Mm -hmm. That sounds great. Wooden overcoats. Yeah. So she invented a board game about the the great smog of 1952 and a serial killer during the great smog. Would yes. you play that game? You like board games. Would yes. you play that game? I'd play that game. Do you know about the Because great I'm obsessed with the idea of creating a detective board game that actually relates to the detective experience. It's incredibly hard to do. Which doesn't involve you reading like an entire novel before you start playing the game. Yes. Do you know about the Great Smog of 1952? So wasn't that when London was like overtaken by smog for like two months or something? No. Okay. It was four, it was five days. Five days. It was Friday to Tuesday. And made people really sick. It was the bad weekend. Yeah. Friday to Tuesday. There was this reverse cyclone and no low winds, no low to the ground winds. Yeah. So it basically circled all of the UK and trapped everything that was in it. I shouldn't laugh, but it, it kind of, it was like a toilet bowl effect. Yeah. It was like everything goes towards the center of this cyclonic system and then it just went still. Well, and, and then the wind blew and it went away. When we say smog, we actually mean smog. Yeah. Like exhaust from cars and factories. Just sitting on top of yeah. you. Well, Alicia has eczema. Yeah. She just itches that arm. I'm like, put some cream on it and shut up. Yeah. Um, but she's just like digging at that arm. She's digging like, at that. Digging at that. But she's not got it on her hands. But she did when she got seen. And oh, no, she, no, no. She she rubs the lotion on her skin, <laughs> which means she has it on her hands, which means she transfers it to other things. Title number two for the episode: She rubs the lotion on her frankenstein. <laughs> Frankenstein's monster plate. <laughs> Don't get confused. Frankenstein is the doctor. Remember? He's the scientist. Oh, my gosh. Don't make the internet correct you on that. One of my favorite Frankenstein memes is him on the the Frankenstein's monster on the ice at the end, where just before he leaves, he goes, by the way, you can call me Frankenstein. It's okay. <laughs> I like that. Yeah. He is my dad. You can call me Junior. Yeah. There you go. So Victor knows that Danny's the mole in the company. So apparently she's been giving away like secret information Companies about the board games. Companies going bankrupt. 
then why are you having this gigantic party? He's not acting like it's going bankrupt. No, he is and not. And Victor doesn't strike me as somebody who's out of touch with his company. He seems very in control of his company. Yeah. I don't know, but and I there could are be wrong. signs of bankruptcy that you could show that they're not showing here. No, not with their lavish lifestyle and their giant house. No. Gosh, that vape pen must have been like five billion dollars. <laughs> he likes it so much he has his photo taken with it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what is up with that photo? So there's a photo. It's the worst of Photoshop Victor. ever. Yes. Ever. We have seen some bad photoshops in this show, and it is by far the worst. It doesn't look like a human. No. It looks like there's a picture of a person sitting at a desk, and he stuck his head through a hole above it. And, That's what it looks and like. And some other monster's hands. Yes. <laughs> and there's a vape pen there. Franken hands. They could Can be. you hand me the Franken plate with your Franken <laughs> ass? They, they could be the hands of the scientist or the monster. We don't know. <laughs> Maybe one of each. That's why they look so funky. But he's got his pen, his vape, his vape there on the desk. It, it would only be better if he like had a giant vape pen and his arm was around it and their heads were tipped at each other. Like, it's me and my vape pen. We're Take a photo of we're us. moving from games to vape pen. Make sure it's black and white yeah. so it'll look classy. Yeah. And we'll put it in a frame and put it on the piano. It's classy. It's classy. So let's talk about pool tables in this house. Okay. <laughs> billiards tables. Because they billiards. are both of them. Sorry. Both of them. They're billiards. Are billiards tables. So. So this, we have a pool table. Yeah. Which you play eight ball on. Right. It's not this a real is billiards. table. It's bigger. It's much bigger. It's much bigger. squarer, right? Yeah. Okay. Now. No, it's the same shape, but it's much bigger. This house is freaky. Yes. Because there's the half height hallway. Yes. Upstairs. Well, we've seen half height hallways. Up like half a flight of stairs. Yes. <laughs> so you go up a half a flight of stairs go and walk in the, the very road. short half height hallway. And then you go down. And and that's where Barnaby and Winter have a room. There's one of those in seven clocks too. It is covered in flowers. Okay. Hold on. The biggest mystery of this episode is this room. Okay. Covered in flowers. Okay. Who lives in this house? Two people. Victor? Yes. And his wife? Yeah, Eleanor. Maybe as a child... Danny. Danny lived in this house. You think this was Danny's room? Possibly <laughs> another person lived in this house, which well, somebody's, was Victor's wife. Somebody's cooking and feeding them all okay. the time, too, by the uh, way. I understand. Okay, Victor's wife may have lived yeah. here. At no point were there two children or two women... Two old women. <laughs> Who shared this room? Yeah, I know. Why <laughs> do they have this room it's the, in the house? It's the guest room for people they hate. Who, if I <laughs> if I showed up to a house as a guest with you and there were two single rooms, I would be like, can we go to another room? <laughs> two single beds. Okay, never now, mind but them. Winter and Barnaby don't want to share a bed. Never this is the perfect them. room for them. Never <laughs> mind. Yes, it's the perfect room for them, but they don't live there. <laughs> <laughs> Though, Winter looks like the jolly dream giant when he flops giant on the bed. When he flops on the bed. <laughs> Well, Eleanor is obviously... With his big old Frankenstein <laughs> out of his underwear. <laughs> Eleanor is obviously a very good host because she has spare toothbrushes. Yes. New tooth... I hope they're new. Uh, toothbrushes for people who come to stay. But, but no spare... But her pajamas. husband's old pajamas. Here you go. But across the hallway from their door is another door that goes into a room that has a mirrored mini stairway that goes down into a room where there's a pool table. Yes. Billiards table. Sorry. Yes. But there's another billiards table that you can see from the big stairway because the camera goes down over the banister and you see Eleanor standing on the floor below and she's next to a billiards table. Yes. And that is not the same room. It's two different billiards tables. I mean, he likes games. I get it. But does he need two billiards tables? Well, again, plus you have a theme room. Have a billiard, have room. billiards room. I think the house is big enough to have a billiard room. Yeah. Put it in there <laughs> and be done with it. No, no. Let's put another one on that stairway. Okay. The second most interesting thing about the room that should not exist. That they put tape on a wallpapered wall? Don't oh. do that. You're going to damage that floral wallpaper that matches the curtains, that matches the bed covers. So I did some research on incident boards, and I'm surprised we haven't covered this. Mm. So what do you think about incident board? Tell me what an incident board is. It's a place to collect 
information so everybody can see it. Yes. And share it and feasibly to organize it in some way. So a timeline yes. or maybe you have groups of pieces of information that go together and you can kind of visually organize them. Yes. What on earth could you imagine did that exact same thing these days? A, um, a computer. Yes. But they don't have one. So, okay. So what I read a really good article about. Do they use a Pinterest that board cops now? don't use <laughs> incident, incident boards No, anymore, of course not. Right? They did up to about the mid 90s and then they got rid of them. Yeah, because now they have things like Vizio where they can create a they digital version of that. Computers who search data. <laughs> like, well, it's that, still important. They're so to, much better at it, right? It, they're still a benefit to seeing things and being able to move them around to make connections in your mind. So this right? guy says there are specialized detective software that allow you to do that. Yeah. Because that leads to the other problem with incident boards. That people can see them? That anyone walking through the police station can see them. <laughs> yes. And they have regularly, even in midsummer, pictures of dead bodies. On. Or pictures of people... Surrounded by the word killer. Yeah. Or like circled, triple, circled, yeah, scribbled. Suspect. Yeah. This is the killer with arrows. <laughs> it makes sense that they recreate one here. Mm -hmm. Okay. I really wish they had have done a line where Winter said, we have no computer. How do we do? How do we figure this out? And John goes, oh, we'll do it the old fashioned way. Rips off the wallpaper <laughs> from the wall. <laughs> and proceeds in the room that should not exist to put the incident board up before he turns to winter and goes, you have no underwear on. <laughs> <laughs> Give me some post-its. This is serious. Because winter's clearly is commando. It's not a matter of a banana hammock. It's not a matter of a G string. No. He has nothing on. Nick Hendricks has nothing on under those pajama bottoms. Well, think about it though. Okay, you and I have both been in situations where we've lost our luggage on a trip yep. and we've had to wear the same clothes for a few days Yes, and it's not pleasant. No. And just being able to take those underwear off and let them air out overnight yep. is a good idea. But if that's the best I'm you can do, you do it. I'm the socks might have peeled the wallpaper <laughs> off the wall. <laughs> that, their little room is a whole episode on itself. I know, and it must not smell good either. Oh my God. Gosh, it can't it must smell be good. Rank. But I love them sneaking down the stairs in Victor's pajamas trying what? to catch somebody. Uh, okay. So They're barefoot, tippy tapping the, in their stripy jam jams. The accountant dad, uh, the accountant husband, Paul, writes the note. Mm -hmm. He sneaks up to the door. Now, it's like he puts the note in without Barnaby noticing, and the, Barnaby's right at the door. No, I think Barnaby's off brushing his teeth. Okay, because it's like it, that was weird how it was blocked. Yeah. That scene was weird. Yeah, because Winter was in the room, so wouldn't he have heard it? I would think so, but, but they you know, don't notice it until Barnaby steps on it. You know, he's probably one of those kids who wears headphones all the time. <laughs> <laughs> he has no service, so he can't listen to music. Okay. There's a smoking land line. lines don't work that way. <laughs> you say that, but. That landline's got to go through water. Okay. A landline is, is analog, uh -huh. but it's on or off. Okay. Uh, the, it can't be like, oh, it sometimes works. If it sometimes works, there is a giant problem with your phone system. Okay, but, okay, we're getting real pedantic here. Plus, okay. couldn't you take the, the telephone line and go across <laughs> and like a chain fairy? <laughs> Can you use the telephone line as a rope to get to the other side? No, because it's under the water. So the, the landline goes out of the house through some kind of conduit that goes under the water yes. with other services, I assume, yes. and on the land, right? Yes. And then it goes into a junction box. Yes. And that junction box controls the telephones, probably for the surrounding area. Yes. And that junction box, in this scenario, 
is in a dip that's now full of water. Okay. So it doesn't work anymore because that's where you put your junction box is in a well. Don't you know that? <laughs> oh, I didn't know that. So that if it rains a little bit. Do you also put cell towers in a well? <laughs> well, yeah, exactly. So, okay, if you have cell service on the shore and you don't have it on the island. They're blocking it somehow. The, yeah. Victor's an evil mastermind in his lair. He's blocking it's cell just, signal. It's just the most overused plot device now of, oh, well, I got no bars. I can't instantly tell who the killer is. It wouldn't matter. Yeah. Even if they did have cell signal, all he would be able to do is call home and apologize to Sarah, but it wouldn't help them solve the crime at all. How am I supposed to work? Lady, your father just died. (laughs) Well, Danny's a jerk. I don't know if you noticed that, but until they reveal that he knew she was the mole, she's just all jerk all the time. And And even then she's like, what is she going to be doing? And even then she's like, oh, I got caught being a jerk by the one person I didn't want to know that I'm a jerk. (laughs) oh i guess i'll feel sad now and then noah's like i don't like you (laughs) thank goodness that's the smartest thing noah says i'm gonna go glue some plates together that don't go belong don't belong together okay dr frankenplate she wants to review contracts that's what she wants to do okay that's what she's doing on paper she's reading contracts she needs to be really important yeah the one thing i'll say about danny that's good is that the dress she's wearing at the party is beautiful Yes. It's velvet and it's burgundy and yep. it has one sleeve and it's gorgeous. Yep, I agree. That's the only nice thing I can say about Danny. This nitrile, speaking of the Franken plate, is from a bottle of aceto nitrile. Yes. Which is actually a chemical. It's actually a thing. Aceto nitrile is used most often as a solvent, but it is also used in lithium batteries. It is a byproduct of another chemical process, and it does, in fact, metabolize into cyanide anywhere between 2 to 24 hours. Okay. That's quite the range. How would she know? Um, I don't know. How would she get a hold of it? Uh, uh, she works for a logistics company that ships things, and she no, stole she some. No, she works from a game company. No. Oh, she works for a logistics. Alicia. Alicia right. works for a shipping company. That's so right. she just um, stole a bottle of it, I guess, of this big industrial compound that's dangerous. It, it can hurt you if it gets on your skin. I really like, in the reveal, that Barnaby acknowledges that Hugo figured out what that piece of plastic was. Yes. It makes Helen happy to know that Hugo figured out, and he and, and Hugo was happy about that too. And he even says Hugo figured it out before I did. So That's so, really yeah, nice. Yeah, that's good. And Helen tried to sell a game to Victor. Yeah, the smog game. Yeah, and so we started about smog. But I think you were going to talk about detective games. Oh, well, yeah, because they, so they're playing a murder, they're hosting a murder game, right? Mm. And it's uh, the idea of the party hadn't ended so abruptly is that they were going to solve a mystery. Yeah. So I was looking for like, what's the origin of that? Yeah. And of course it comes from the golden age of crime, you know, um, a lot of people were doing them in the, the interwar years in England. Well, there, and there's a, like, there is a. I think it's a Poirot where they play murder. Mm -hmm. Well, a murder is announced. That's what everybody thinks it's about. They think they're going to have a murder party. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then somebody actually gets killed. Right. Um, The, of course there's clue, Cluedo overseas, but so two things I found that are interesting about murder games. One is that there's an old parlor game called wink. Have you ever heard of this? Mm, Maybe. So one person, so like, let's say everybody gets a card, like a playing card. And there's only one Joker, yep. right? Whoever gets the Joker is the killer, but you don't tell anybody what you have. Right? Yeah. So anybody could be the killer. And then you just have a party. And if you're the killer, your goal is to make eye contact with somebody and wink at them. And then they have to wait five to 10 seconds and then drop dead. So they have to wait so that you can move on, right? So that it's not so obvious who did it. But then they're dead and they're out. And at we some point- We played something similar to this at Scout Camp where you- when if you were alone with the person you said i'm the killer and you got their card yeah well so in this game at some point you accuse yeah and if you're wrong you're out it's deduction games yeah but the idea of winking at people is weird the other interesting thing is that apparently murder mystery parties are really big in china they're so popular in china that the government is investigating whether they should shut them down wow they're huge that's super interesting by early this year so in february of this year there were 30 thousand venues in china for jubentia is what they call it 
Okay. So Jubencha is like, you know, we have escape room companies that have like little escape rooms. You can go and pay yep. to, to do the escape room. These are murder mystery places. Yeah, I'm still putting that in the SEO of the episode. <laughs> 30,000 of them in China. Now, I know it's a big country, yep. but the population is pretty condensed in a few yep. areas. It is that popular to have these murder parties. So China is a weird thing because, well, for many reasons, but like we get no analytics from China. Well, no. I have no idea how popular we are. We don't. We we could have. We don't even know if people can access us in China. We could have 500 subscribers in China. Mm -hmm. We'd have no idea. I think we probably do. I think we have about half a million in China. Okay. Yeah. I mean, we don't know. Cool. (laughs) I'm, I'm okay with that, man. Yeah, it's a black hole of information. They're going to go nuts when we're mystery maniacs. <laughs> but yeah, these, and, and it it's happened over like just the last like three years. Yeah. That these mystery, murder mystery parlor game places have just popped up oh, all over the place. super cool. And I think it's probably a low cost business. Yeah. You know, so it's easy to start it. You don't need a bunch of equipment or and anything. It, and it's low <clears throat> controversy. Right? right. Well, it was. Yeah. Until I guess everybody under the age of 25 got infatuated with it. And now the government thinks they've got to do something about it. Okay. Let's deal with the incredibly sad ending to this episode. <sighs> Alicia so Jack is a is dumb seeing a girlfriend. Psychopath. No, I'm sorry, sorry. It's not a Three's Company episode. Alicia boy, is a dumb like, psychopath. If Alicia had the emotional intelligence to go speak with her sister in private, this ha- episode would not happen. Or step out and go, hey, you can't have my baby. Why are you talking about building a nursery? Either of those. Okay. Because Victor and, El- and Eleanor are walking together in their own home. Having a private conversation about... And Victor comes off here as like an excited grandpa. I think he's a nice man. I think so. I actually think he's a nice person. And I think Eleanor legitimately absolutely loves him. Oh, absolutely. And he loves her. Yeah. I think he's a good person. His daughter is awful. Anyway. Yes. They're talking about gifting a new nursery to Alicia when the baby comes. Yeah. Like they want to build it in their house, fix it up, yep. nice furniture, everything, and they want it to be a surprise. Which, if I was a rich guy who ran a, a game company and my sister-in-law was having a baby, I would do that. That's an awesome gift. That's a super awesome gift. Because they're obviously wealthy. Whether the company's going under or not, they're fine. But she only hears part of the conversation, and she is so paranoid that she's like, they're going to take my baby. And hours later, she kills him. Hours later. She can't kill Eleanor because Eleanor's pregnant with the baby. I hate murder plots that can be solved by a simple, unemotional conversation. Yeah. Right? I'm not saying it's everything. You know, a wife cheating on a husband and the husband finds out that's a difficult emotional conversation to have and may lead to murder. Yeah. Certainly. Whether you confront them or not, you might still want to kill him. There's ramifications for that. And they could have made it more cut and dried here. But if your murder plot can be overrun with, excuse me, what? Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. There's a problem there. And then we have Hugo. And that's why I think horrifically sad. That's why I think she's just a stupid psychopath because she doesn't even consider clarifying that or confronting her sister about it. It doesn't even cross her mind. Murder is the only solution she can come up with. And the same with Hugo. What am I going to do? He'll eventually figure it out. Okay. Won't Barnaby eventually figure it out? Why don't you kill Barnaby? Hugo came to her room after she poisoned herself. Yes. Because he cared about how she was doing and he wanted her to know he had found evidence and he was going to figure it out. He yep. was going to figure out who tried to kill her too. He did it to make her feel safer. Yeah. Saying that he was going to figure it out. And she lures him to his death and she kills him by hitting him on the head and then jabbing him in the neck yeah. with a piece of wood, basically, which is a horrible way to die. She would be completely covered with crap. But yes. With blood. But even more than that, she frames her sister. Oh. She puts Eleanor's necklace in Hugo's hands yeah. so that Eleanor, the woman carrying her baby. Which Barnaby figures out in two seconds. Yeah. Well, because she rubs the lotion on her skin. No, no. Barnaby and then figures out she rubs out the that, lotion on the necklace. That she's not being... Like that, that she that, that the just, necklace didn't get ripped off of Eleanor's neck. Yeah? yeah, because she'd have a big mark on her neck. <sighs> If that necklace got broken around her neck. Yes. 
Yeah. So Alicia kills her brother-in-law for no reason. Then she pretends to poison herself. Then she kills a completely innocent man who has nothing to do with it. All because she didn't say. Excuse me, what? What are you talking about? Yeah. That's all it would take. And tries to frame her sister for it. Her generous sister. Yeah. Who's. Who actually cares about her? She's horrible. I'm surprised that Eleanor doesn't go into a rage and, like, beat her up at the end. Eleanor has gone through some stuff this weekend. Yeah. Not only does she see her husband die in front of her, but then she finds out her sister did it and and was happy to frame her for it. And she had been planning not to have a baby in her life. Right. And now she has to plan to have a baby in her life. Without a husband. Yeah. And a stepdaughter who... Is see, horrible. Is horrible. Yeah. Like, poor Eleanor. Well, poor, incredibly rich Eleanor. Still. Still. You can have money and still be really sad. Yeah. She's going to have to play board games alone with that kid forever. That's true. Yeah. On that island with no phone. No. And just a boat. Yes. <laughs> Franken plates everywhere. They're going to become all gray gardens up in there, yeah. don't you think? I think so. I think so. Best corpse. <laughs> Nice corpse. Victor or Hugo? Do do we not want to deal with the tortoise ending of weirdness? No. John was upset about a promotion. He didn't talk about his feelings either. The end. The end. He didn't kill his wife. No. (laughs) And got a new turtle. Best corpse by far is Hugo. Yeah, I think so too. He's just rock solid. Yeah. Though, I mean, Victor's death is dramatic. The way he chokes on the stairs and falls. Mm -hmm. But corpse wise, I got to give it to you. I got to think Adrian totally loves doing that too. Yeah. By the way, Rachel Sterling, who plays Eleanor, she was also in the Bletchley Circle. Yes. Which is super good. If if you haven't watched it, watch it. She's in the Detectorists, which if you haven't watched it, watch it. And she is a completely different human being in The Detectorist. Oh, yeah. She is. Well, she's an actor, honey. That's what she does. She becomes different people okay, for but, different roles. Okay, but like Tom Hanks is Tom Hanks. <laughs> That's true. Right. And Tom Cruise is Tom Cruise. She's in the Suchet Poirot that really creeps me out. I can't even watch it. Okay. She plays Carolyn Crail in Five Little Pigs. Yeah. And that. The the book did not creep me out. That Suchet version of that part, it creeps me out. And we'll explore this at some later date. Hint, hint. Yeah. But that's one of my favorites. It's really well done. And that's why I don't like it. Yeah. Because <laughs> it affects me. Like, it's just, ugh. Yeah. But she's really good in it. She's, She's super good in But it. I think the first place I ever saw her was in a Doctor Who. Yeah. Uh, a David Tennant Doctor Who. Yeah. And I... Uh, well, no, you would have seen her in uh, Mrs. Bradley before that. Well, I didn't know it was her. Yeah, didn't know it was her. Um, but it's 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 one where it, that I think Diana Riggs might be in that, where she's... She's an older woman, and she's got this weird red monster that yeah, lives like on her chest. I think like, that's a Christmas chest. episode. I think. I think. Oh, it's really gross. Yeah, yeah. It's I think super they're gross. Both in it. Yeah, I think so. We'll have to double check. It's that. super nasty. Yeah. Okay. After the credits. Okay. Poor Eleanor. Poor, poor. Paul. <laughs> poor Paul. He's kind of a loser anyway. I really hope that Eleanor takes Helen and says everything is looked after from now on for you. Yeah. Why don't you just write? Yeah. Or design. You come to the company and design games. Write mysteries. Yeah. Do whatever you want. Whatever you want, it's done. Yeah. Plus, I think they'd get along. I think so, too. I think Eleanor and Helen would get along. Yeah. So, uh, Joshua's out. Yes. And I don't know how I feel about Andrew. I I, I mean, he was a... He, I don't think Eleanor's going to pursue charges against Joshua and Andrew. No. But they're definitely out. Yeah. Eleanor really needs to build a new circle of people around her. She does. Because these people are not good. And remove some of the knicky necks out of that house. <laughs> and Noah w- was never, well, I don't even know what he was supposed to be anyway. Yeah. So I, he'll just go off and break stuff and glue it back together again, I guess, yeah. in a way that's not interesting. Yeah. I think uh, I think Eleanor and Helen should be buddies. Yeah. And be happy together. Because they could wow. be cool. They both have had, they both have a reason to hate Alicia, that's for sure. Alicia's going to prison for forever. Yeah. And I don't think Paul's going to do well. 
no, without her. I don't think Paul's going to miss his B12 shot. <laughs> <laughs> you don't think he can give himself a B12 shot? No. Not if you need it every single day at 8.15. 7.45. Get it Whatever. straight. So that is Happy Families. Excellent. Wow. They're unhappy families. They are unhappy families. But maybe afterwards, Helen and Eleanor can kind of be like sisters and have their own family with the baby and be happy. Hang out together. On their island with their little boat. I think Floor secretly wants to be on that boat. I want to build a bridge for those people. Yes. Oh, what do we have next time? We have season 22, episode four, which is? The Scarecrow Murderers. Yeah. Which is a super good one. Uh Uh-huh. There's some weird scarecrows, that's for sure. (laughs) Absolutely some fantastic. (laughs) Some things that barely pass as scarecrows. It's a Halloween episode, too, I think. Which I love. Which will be released on... uh, July the 4th. Yep. We'll release that 4th of July. Just a quick reminder that you have a few days left to buy some swag from the Midsummer Maniacs uh, store to get the donation to the World Central Kitchen. We're going to wrap that up on the last day of June and send that off, and we'll be sure to tell everybody exactly how much we were able to donate. Thank you to everybody who's bought something so far. And there, there has been motion happened and things in place and documents created for mid uh for mystery maniacs oh yeah we are don't doubt we're not going anywhere we're not going anywhere we will be here for the foreseeable future we never done... mind the fact that we have three episodes of midsummer left la, we la, have la, three I'm episodes of midsummer left it's your birthday la 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 <laughs> it's all gonna be okay honey ready yeah but, but we will be asking you some questions, listeners. We'll, we'll be sending out some more surveys. Yeah. We want, we're going to have to test some things and kind of experiment yep. a little bit initially yep. uh, to kind of get a feel for and, what we're doing. And, and again, there get will ideas. be a call to arms as the maniac army <laughs> needs to spread out into the world to other maniacs. And recruit some mystery people. Yeah, yeah. To, to recruit some mystery people. Those, that friend of yours who goes, oh, I love Poirot. No, I don't like mystery. I don't like that Midsummer. Midsummer. But I love Poirot. That is our target. <laughs> Find those people in your life. Bring them in. We will one be of us. Reeling one them of in. us. All right. Absolutely. Until next time. Bye, maniacs. Bye, maniacs. Nothing before this point can be used in outtakes. Says who? Me. You don't get to be the editor czar over there and do whatever you want. Okay. <laughs>